Sir Rector Magnificus. I hereby open the meeting. Sir Rector Magnificus, highly learned mem sorry, sorry. I bid you welcome, Mr. Trigway. You are appearing now before the committee appointed by the Doctorate Board of the Erasmus University in Rotterdam to present your thesis and the appended propositions. But before we start the discussion, I invite you to give a short introduction in which you tell us about the subjects and the aims of the studies and your findings. The floor is yours. Sir Rector Magnificus, highly learned members of the Defense Committee, dear colleagues, family and friends, thank you for coming to the PhD Defense, especially in the time of Corona. Now in the next 15 minutes, I would like to share my six year long PhD trajectory titled Leprosy Post Exposure Prophylaxis with Single Dose of Rifampus in Health Economic Aspects in India. Leprosy is caused by Mycobacterium leprae. The patients develop anesthetic skin patch, which don't have sensations because of dam damages of small nerves. It also involves uh, nerves in other parts of the body. If leprosy occurs in the facial region, ocular region, it can also involve eye and can lead to the blindness. The most common route of uh, transmission is believed to be respiratory system, but then there are, can be other routes also possible. In terms of global burden, India, Brazil, and Indonesia are the three highest endemic countries. India contribu contributes around 16% to the global burden, and together with Brazil and Indonesia, they contribute 80% to the global burden. Over a period of time, we have seen a good progress from 2000 to 2006, but after then, there is a stagnation in the number of new cases at global level, which indicates that transmission is static and ongoing. In India, there is a national leprosy elimination program, which distribute free medical, uh, free MDT drugs to the patients. When an asymptomatic patient develops the symptom, that is the skin, anesthetic skin patches, then he can go to the physician in health centers, and if fine with the clinical signs symptoms of leprosy, he can be recommended to multi-drug treatment. For MB patient, it is six months, and for PB patient, it is 12 months. The MB PB depends on the bacterial load, but for program purpose, if a skin patch is more than five, then it is MB, and if a skin patch between one to five is classified as PB leprosy. If the patient completes the treatment, it is considered to be cured. But during these phases, there are some complications, like from asymptomatic phase to symptomatic phase, leprosy can have a very long incubation period, and in that time, patient doesn't know, and he keeps spreading the bacteria to others. From stage from its development of clinical sign and symptom of leprosy to the ex examination and starting the drug, there can be delay in diagnosis and treatment, which can lead to further spread of the bacteria. It, the leprosy has a very long treatment duration. Because of that, there are high chance of discontinuation, and patient can fall into the drug resistance. After the treatment, we have also seen there are a lot of relapsed cases, which indicate that the the treatment completion precisely doesn't mean cure. Leprosy is in a vicious cycle with poverty, which means poverty causes leprosy and leprosy causes poverty. If remain untreated, leprosy can lead to disability. Patient, go through, patient and family go through very poor mental health because of a stigma and discrimination. In terms of policy, WHO 2016 and 20 policy recommends early detection especially in child cases. They recommend to, to conduct the targeted interventions, especially in the high endemic areas. They recommend to increase the access to health. Also, the contact screening is essential, and there should be no stigma and discrimination for people suffered with leprosy. A recent guideline in 2018, recommend uh, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention, recommended chemoprophylaxis, for contacts of patients with leprosy single dose rifampicin. This recommendation basis came from the COLAP study, which found that the single dose of rifampicin is risk of leprosy by 57%. However, 
there was a, a, a gap of uh, feasibility studies and health economic evidences for a large scale up of single dose of rifampicin. That gap was filled by leprosy post-exposure prophylaxis program, which was implemented between 2015 to 18 in India, Brazil, Indonesia, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, and Tanzania, and Nepal. The purpose of LPEV were numerous, but for our thesis purpose, we focused on feasibility and health economic aspects. In the program, the health worker conducted house visits, and then they listed the previous patients, asked their consent to enroll in the study, and also to consent to contact their contacts. The contacts were also contacted, and their consent were also taken. And if given consent, they were screened. If found with no clinical signs and symptoms of leprosy, and also after having all the exclusion, no exclusion criteria for the single dose of rifampicin, they were administered a single dose of rifampicin for prevention of leprosy. This whole process was implemented meticulously, and for that we have done intensive training at different levels. There was an intensive monitoring program from local, provincial, national, and international level. The leprosy post-exposure prophylaxis was also represented at different forums and meetings. For in India, the location of leprosy post-exposure prophylaxis was at the west coast of India between a very small union territory sandwiched between two major states of Gujarat and Maharashtra. This area was special because it had the highest, it is the highest leprosy endemic pocket in India. It's a union territory, which means it directly comes under federal government, and it's a tribal area. At baseline, we, there were more PB cases, high child leprosy cases, but low disability. The high child leprosy cases indicated that the transmission is going on, and the low disability indicated that there is the program, national leprosy program is still active, active compared to other areas, which is picking up the cases early and preventing disabilities. We also re realized that the health system of Dadar Nagar Haveli was advanced compared to other areas in India. They have better finances and human resources coming under into the union territory, direct federal government. So for our thesis, we had three research questions, that how do investment case concepts apply to leprosy elimination? Investment case is a body of evidence on which the, in, the intervention are judged and recommended for scale up. Can po the second question for our thesis was that can post-exposure prophylaxis with single dose rifampicin be implemented into a national leprosy control program? The third question was what is the cost effectiveness of SDR? To answer these three questions, we conducted six studies with different methodologies. In the first study, we did a systematic re literature review. And in the second study is a study protocol when, where we defined the baseline before starting the LPE. In the third study, we recorded and reported the first year development of LPEP in those areas and the program adjustments due to the local condition. The fourth, fifth, and sixth uh, answered the third question, uh, the cost, um, cost uh, effectiveness of SDR. In the fourth study, we did a survey among the patients and asked about their household expenditure on leprosy. In the fifth study, we did a economic costing in the health system with the health system perspective to know the service delivery cost of leprosy through program. And in the fifth study, we did a cost effective analysis. So how investment case concept apply to leprosy elimination? We developed an 11 point framework on leprosy elimination investment case. The main findings were that that data is scanty, especially the quantitative data, particularly on socioeconomics, cost effectiveness, disease burden for LEIC. We found that the biological and technical feasibility of leprosy elimination is not certain because transmission mechanism is not, con uh, is not clear. The single dose of rifampicin and, and the vaccination are the two possible tools for elimination. However, SDR is in an advanced stage due to the feasibility of implementation and PVS record and report of the interventions. In the second question, 
that how L, uh, the uh, single dose of rifampicin fits into the national control program framework. So we found that LPEB is compatible with different health system. Therefore, it can be successfully integrated into the established national leprosy program in six countries. Single dose rifampicin is safe for large scale distribution because we did not find any adverse event from India. So before moving to the last and third uh, question, I would like to introduce with cost concepts of cost effectiveness. Cost effective analysis is a form of economic analysis that compares the relative cost and outcome of different courses of action. The effect is usually measured in disability adjusted life years, which is to quantify the disease burden considering mortality and morbidity. One daily can be thought as one healthy life year lost. We found that the household expenditure of leprosy is high between 10 to $16 per healthcare visit. Most of the expenditure is due to the wage loss and transportation while seeking healthcare. The financial burden to the patient is more if the health system is weak. We also found that expenditure is catastrophic for many leprosy households. The patient experiencing catastrophic expenditure is spent twice the amount than a normal leprosy patient. The catastrophic expenditure are 80%, 88% less if health system is advanced. The health system cost for a leprosy visit was only 17% high for an advanced health system with LPEP, like in Dadar Nagar Haveli, than the routine without LPEP. The unit cost of delivering STRS chemoprophylaxis for a contact was US dollar three. This include all the process we followed in the LPEP. The single largest health system cost went into paying salaries to human resource. The SDR is cost effective in a moderate disability burden situation with US dollar 447 as incremental cost per daily is averted. The cost to avoid a new leprosy case is US dollar 2,873. SDR is cost effective in short to long run, ranging from five to 25 years. So we conclude, an investment case is necessary to plan for leprosy elimination, but is far from complete. An advanced health system reduces the patient expenditure and improves the health seeking behavior. Other than the level of leprosy endemicity, the health system capacity for contract tracing is important for cost effectiveness of a leprosy control program. The post-exposure prophylaxis with single dose of rifampicin is feasible, cost effective, and compatible with most national leprosy programs, including that of India. So we recommend to complete the global investment case for leprosy elimination through single dose of rifampicin by estimating its cost effectiveness in other LPEP countries. So we recommend to invest in health system to reduce the out-of-pocket expenditure and other economic burdens from the patient. We also recommend to scale up in India. And during a scale up, we recommend to prioritize moderate to high disability burden areas because it has the maximum opportunity to avert the disability and secure the gains. We also recommend to implement the SDR for long term for maximize gain. Thank you. Dear Sir Rector Magnificus, now I give my words to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your <clears throat> presentation. Mr. Candidate, it's now time to defend your thesis. And I call now upon your promoter, Professor Richardus, to start the discussion. And in the meantime, I hope that we can see our opponents online. Professor Richardus. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Hector. Um, I, I've had the opportunity over the past five, six years, ample opportunity to discuss all aspects of the uh, project with the uh, candidates. Um, I'm very confident that he will be able to answer your questions, and I'm also very grateful for the committee members, both here in person as online, that they uh, have given their time to, uh, to do this uh, um, uh, uh, defense, so I would like to hand the word quickly to them. Thank you. Then I give the floor now to Professor Klatzer, Professor of Developmental and Evaluation of Diagnostic Tests in Developing Countries at the University of Amsterdam. Thank you, Mr. Rector. 
Uh, before I start the discussion, I would like to congratulate you with this very nice thesis. And I, I'm sure that this important scientific work will uh, bring true leprosy elimination a step closer. And of course, I would like to extend my congratulations to your promoter and co-promoter. Now, the first topic I would like to discuss with you is about diagnostic assays. Several times in your thesis, you mentioned that diagnostic, uh, a simple field-friendly diagnostic test is prerequisite for successful contact-based preventive strategy in leprosy. Now, it was, I think, if I remember well, it was in 1989 that my group described already a, <clears throat> the first PCR test for leprosy, for M. leprae. And since then, we and others have described several diagnostic assays based on other principles like antibody detection. None of these tests have ever been used in the field because they were not sensitive enough, not specific enough. And, st and for the last 30 years or so, these tests have always been very promising. And now you also say they are very promising. Now, how long can something be promising? So I wonder whether these tests are really necessary and for what exactly for successful uh, preventive therapy? Yeah. Highly learned opponent, thank you for your question. Your question is that how these diagnostic tests are important for the leprosy programs and how they can impact to reduce the disglaze burden in future. Uh, Yes, uh, there is a long history of uh, uh, diagnostic text in trying in leprosy programs, but so far they are not yet, we found a very uh, specific and sensitive test. But on the horizon, we have genome sequencing and PCR tests, which are looking promising. And if they being, uh, if, if we have field-based tests which can rapidly diagnose the subclinical leprosy, then uh, what we have seen in the presentation that during the asymptomatic to symptomatic phases, there are a lot of spread, mainly the spread happens in that time. And if we have a sensitive test to detect the subclinical leprosy at that time, then we can decrease the delay in diagnosis through that diagnostic helps, and we can start the treatment on time, which will help the reduce burden. But I suppose you agree with me that sensitivity is one thing, but it's mainly, I think, about specificity, because you will need to screen yeah. a lot of people who have no symptoms, and yeah. well, leprosy is not such a huge disease in terms of prevalence and incidence, so you will get a lot of false positives probably. Yeah, that is the case right now, and that so that you still uh, think it's promising. Yes, if we get diagnostics which have more better sensitivity, then then it's possible. Well, I hope you're hoping. Um, another question. Um, one thing I I do not understand from your paper described in chapter uh, seven. You may perhaps explain to me. Uh, is that you assume a 50% reduction in grade one disability, while at the same time you assume overall effectiveness of preventing leprosy of around 60%. So what I don't understand, I would assume, but maybe uh, I'm precisely wrong, as you say, um, that if you prevent leprosy, you prevent disability, and those numbers would be the same. Why would you assume only 50% reduction in grade one while you assume a 60% reduction in leprosy? Yeah, because 50% we decided, uh, thank you, uh, highly learned opponent for again this next question. And 50% uh, decrease we decided in grade one leprosy because uh, 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 SDR is very effective in preventing the PB cases basically and because PB cases also have high chance of developing not the very severe case of uh, MB leprosy, uh, grade two disability, but the grade one disability. That's why we went to up to 15% for prevention. Thank you. Okay, that's a very short answer. Okay, then w one other uh, question I had is, like now you apply SDR 
PEP to, uh, uh, to context, to specific groups like uh, close context or neighbors, social context, etc. Why did you ever consider of using it as a whole, as a blanket approach for a whole population or a whole area, as is done for some other diseases as well, like worm infections? For uh, thank, you, thank you, highly learned opponent, again for the question. And in this program, we did the contact tracing, uh, in which we, on an average, covered 30 contacts uh, per index case. And it was not the blanket approach we used in India. However, in Indonesia, under the same program, we implemented the blanket approach, but for the blanket approach, there's some requirement that it should be a close community and there should not be very high migration. And because of that, the, this, the in situation in India was not like that in the Indonesia island. And therefore, we couldn't do the blanket approach and we did for contact tracing approach. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You have more time or? No. Okay, thank you. I give the word back to the... Thank you. Then we welcome online Professor Smith. Professor Smith is Emeritus Professor of Public Health at the University of Aberdeen. Professor Smith, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and thank you for allowing me to participate in this way. The study of the economic aspects of leprosy and leprosy control has been a major gap in our understanding. This thesis, this body of work, makes a major contribution to, un to addressing this gap using a whole range of different methods, systematic reviews, costing studies, mixed methods, economic analysis, and this is really very important. In the introduction, you state that the Global Burden of Disease Project gives leprosy a low priority because of a lack of data. Do you feel now that we are in a better position to give a better weighting to leprosy in terms of prioritizing and resource allocation than was given by the Global Disease, Global Burden of Disease Project? Highly learned opponent, thank you for your question. Your question is that does this PhD thesis has bring the leprosy on priority and now are we in better position to advocate that leprosy is undermined? And my short answer to is that certainly yes, because though we haven't really directly touched the disability adjusted life year weights given for leprosy, which are too low at that current moment, uh, we actually in, uh, investigated the health economic aspects like out-of-pocket expenditure from the patient, economic burden, which is, which is seen very high. And in theory, there should be a correlation between the high economic burden and the severity of disease also. So, yes, thank you for your question. So if we were looking at this question again, I mean, because the global burden of disease is really important because it um, sets priorities, it affects resource allocation, that we really need to look at getting a more realistic approach in terms of understanding what priority should be given to leprosy and leprosy programs. Uh, yes, uh, that uh, this thesis has brought, uh, helped to intro investigate the economic burden on the patients. And what we see as a next step is to now investigate into the mechanism how the disability weights are being assigned, what are the clinical signs and symptoms considered while uh, defining the weights, and are these, uh, these uh, clinical signs and symptoms and situation and consequences are properly weighted by the experts. And if we can do that, uh, then the disability weights will be revised and that will have an, in the next global burden of disease, certainly it will help to uh, correctly represent the global burden in terms of disability for leprosy. Thank you.
Yes, and my understanding is that this body of work that you and your colleagues have produced really ought to contribute to that revision in terms of the position that's given and the priority that's uh, accorded to leprosy in the Global um, Burden of Disease Project. Can I move on to a slightly different <coughs> issue? In many countries, there are a consistent pattern of underdiagnosis and underreporting of leprosy in women. I was interested looking at the findings from the household expenditure study. Does that provide any information that would help us understand underreporting in women? Highly learned opponent, thank you for this very important question because based on our field experience, I'm in situation to answer your question that in fields we found that yes, women are underreported because of the uh, socioeconomic situation in the country and also that men have more opportunity to access the healthcare as compared to women. And uh, that's that are the two main reasons uh, because of that we see that women are underreported. And if the programs are designed keeping these two situations in mind and target the women, uh, and uh, they are being enrolled in the program sufficiently, I think this problem can be solved. Thank you. When you look in the, in the household expenditure study, um, am I right in saying that women were classified as being non-earners? Highly learned opponent, uh, I, can I request you to repeat your question? In the household study, when you look at the tables in terms of household expenditure, when against women, it says these are non-earners. And if that's the case, then the expenditure um, that related to attendance and for, for treatment really is being underestimated. Highly learned opponent, thank you for your question. Uh, the cost data and patient surveys are very sensitive to the manner it has been implemented. I can brief on the method that we applied in our thesis to how to uh, minimize the recall bias and how to uh, properly cover the, all the uh, genders in the program. We actually did household surveys of the leprosy patients, which, we, which means we interviewed the head of the household, maybe a female or a male. And in that situations, we also uh, uh, described the, uh, the, the questions which we have to also in the presence of other members. So in nutshell, we actually calculated the cost at household level, and then we divided that cost to number of households were there and to break down into the number of visits paid by the, uh, the patient actually. So in that sense, we covered the households, uh, which includes men and women both. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Professor the Van der Index case was a woman, was it different? Uh, highly learned opponent, sorry, can you repeat your question? I think I need to hand back to the chair at this point. Thank you, yeah, because your time is over, maybe when we time have for a second round. And thank you very much for your contribution to this discussion. And we continue also online. And I call now upon Professor van der Velden, Professor of Public Health at the Radboud University in Nijmegen. Professor van der Velden. Thank you, Mr. Rector. Dear candidate, I also would like to congratulate you and your promotion team with your thesis incorporating quite some evidence for the next steps towards leprosy elimination. I like the uh, broad perspective you take, especially when you describe the complexity of the disease leprosy uh, and uh, the complex context in which leprosy occurs and must be dealt with. The link with health systems, I, I appreciate uh, enormous. In contrast, your solution of the problem is quite simple. If we implement uh, SDR, PEP, in an endemic areas, we can fix the elimination. 
After the failure of various previous elimination strategies, I would hope to see that happens. But before that, I would like to discuss with you some topics. And the first one is cost effective, uh, effectiveness analysis. You use this important tool in your thesis quite frequently, and you seem to be aware of uh, that it's context specific. But what I miss is that cost effectiveness must be considered within deliberative processes in a country. Uh, with the deliberative processes, I mean uh, that there is open mind thinking, reflection uh, on what kind of goals you're going to achieve uh, or not. Uh, and to be successful in the country, you need uh, to institutionalize these deliberative processes. And I have no idea whether in India there are health technology unit who can help to uh, complete these deliberative processes. In your thesis, it looks very much like uh, that you say, now we have the knowledge, we have a good intervention, just implement it. Uh, but I would like to hear your view whether you agree with me that for a successful elimination, you need this deliberative process in a society to think about it. Is leprosy a priority like the previous speaker asked for? And uh, other, uh, is, are there enough resources in the country to deal with the problem? Can you give uh, your views about it? Highly learned opponent, thank you for your question. Your question is that, is leprosy still a priority in India? And is the Indian uh, socioeconomic system and the political system it has the capacity to, to build up the knowledge or use up the knowledge for using it successfully for the implementation of the NEPROSI program and uh, reaching towards the elimination. Yeah. 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 So your f first question uh, is, uh, is leprosy a priority in India? As we have seen in the presentation, uh, highly learned opponent, that we, India con contributes to the 60% of the global case load. And let's compare it with an another disease for another infectious disease, let's uh, say polio. Leprosy also causes disability, and polio also, also causes disability. If even a one case of polio is found in India, the certificate of polio elimination will be taken off from India. But leprosy causes many disability, continuing causing many uh, disabilities. And if we, if we see in that perspective, then certainly leprosy is a priority because it's a disability causing disease and it's causing many disabilities in India. The second question is that... If I may, if I may interrupt you. Sure. May I interrupt you? Sure, uh, highly learned opponent. I checked the, the, the website of the Indian CDC mm -hmm. and leprosy is not on their top priority list. Do you recognize that or not? Is that correct? Uh, highly learned opponent, thank you for your question. Uh, I don't uh, uh, realize, uh, uh, cannot answer this question because I haven't checked the CDC's website. But for Indian contact and situation, CDC is not that important, but what important is the neglected tropical disease, uh, uh, WHO, because in India, we, we are, the governments are highly aligned with the WHO and work very closely with WHO, and also the CDC, what the programs they implement in India or consultancies they give it to Ministry of Health is also through the root of WHO. So for India, we prioritize uh, things based on the WHO recommendation and WHO certainly list leprosy as an NTD and a priority in India. Thank you for your question. But you take it for granted then that uh, the Indian society is committed to solve the leprosy problem, yes or no? Uh, highly learned opponent. It's not just the government, I mean. Uh, thank you for your question and I, uh, uh, believe that and I feel that that com community is uh, proactive. It's believed that leprosy should be eliminated in India. Also, we have seen that the belief of community goes to the political arena. And in the last few years, the current government and the prime minister has actively advocating to eliminate leprosy. Uh, he is the one who, again, uh, 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 politically and uh, administratively uh, bringing the program very active, and that what we have seen in the last five years. Thank you. 
Okay, and I wonder, is there still time or not? Y uh, yes, in India, leprosy is still a public health uh, problem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor van der Velden, for your contribution to the discussion. We continue with Professor Hasker. Professor Hasker is Professor of Common Tropical Infectious Disease and Verbonden at the Institute of Tropical Medicine in Antwerp. Thank you. Uh, uh, dear uh, candidate, please allow me first to congratulate you on a very uh, comprehensive and interesting and important thesis and also the promoter and the co-promoter. So um, I have a few questions I would like to ask. Uh, if in chapter 7 you uh, state that uh, the effect of SDR-PEP would be difficult to observe in a three-year program. Is that correct? Uh, uh, highly opponent, thank you for your question, but can you please repeat your question? So you state that uh, it is difficult to observe an effect of SDR-PEP in a program that lasts only three years. Yes. Yes? Now, I was just wondering about that uh, because you would expect that, uh, well, if you stop subclinically infected people from progressing to disease, that the effect would be instant. Can you comment on that? Yeah, highly learned opponent. Thank you for your question. Your question is that, that there is a statement in the thesis that three years is uh, a less time to observe the effect. I think the, the intention for this uh, uh, statement was coming from the effect, uh, that what is our uh, endpoint effect we, we, we decided for us to measure the impact. For us, we in, took the impact as disability adjusted life years at what we have used in our cost effectiveness study. If we go retrospectively, then DALI's uh, depends on the disability and uh, highly learned opponent, disability takes a long time to cause because there's a long incubation period and three years of intervention, we cannot, we could not conduct a cohort like a study where we keep on following the patients for several years uh, and then we see whether the uh, disability developed and whether, uh, whether this person had rifampicin capsule or not. In that uh, effect point, yes, three years is a little time to see that. And for that, we took the help of modeling to uh, forecast the disability burden. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for a very clear answer. And then uh, immediately that uh, leads to the next question I have. Uh, you said you used uh, modeling for the, you did cost effectiveness, the cost you, uh, well, you assessed, but for the effectiveness part, you used modeling. Is that right? Yeah, highly learned opponent. Again, thank you for your important question. We applied modeling in both cost as well as in the effect. For the effect, we use SimcoLab model, which is a micro simulation agent based model, which uh, simulates the life history of a leprosy patient. It's a very uh, acceptable and approved model. For the cost, we also use the simulations. Uh, because we had, from our previous paper, we had the unit cost of 2.3 US dollars for a single dose of in uh, delivery through a program. And we used that cost to simulate in different uh, uh, situations. And we took a horizon of the, uh, the cost simulation. And then we applied these costs randomly with the outcome of the SimcoLab model. So in nutshell, the advantage of the, both the using simulation in cost as well as in the effect is that we did account uncertainty very well. So we considered uncertainty in cost as well as we accounted for uncertainty in the effect. Thank you. And, uh, and okay, thank you. But in case you would uh, want to demonstrate co uh, effectiveness, not just from a model, but in a real study context, uh, how would you set this up? How would you, what would be your study design in the Indian context? How could you demonstrate effectiveness? Highly led opponent, thank you for your question again. Uh, your question is that how we can demonstrate uh, without using modeling whether the SDR is effective or not. Then the two choice of methodology is one cohort study, uh, which is uh, uh, what we can do is we can set up a cohort, the people who have taken the rifampicin during 2015 to 18 under LPA program. And then we follow, follow up these people uh, 
till they develop the, do uh, the, the clinical signs and symptoms of uh, leprosy and disability, the two endpoints. And based on that, if we follow up them significantly, then we can demonstrate that how, pe how many people who had rifampicin contacts did not develop any leprosy and further disability. The second choice can be a little easier, is the, uh, the retrospective uh, cohort studies that at the end, like after a full incubation, considering the full incubation period of leprosy, if there were uh, uh, leprosy cases and disability cases, then we retrospective follow back and come to know whether they had rifampicin or not. And then we can make a case and control group those who, the, the leprosy patient who uh, had SDR and those who did not had SDR and what is the odds ratio of having disability of uh, leprosy in that situation. Thank you. You have time for one small question and a compact answer. Yeah, just a very short question. And uh, your cost data from patients, I, uh, if I understand correctly, they were based on costs during the last three clinic visits while on treatment. Is that correct? Yeah. Hi, Lillian opponent. Again, thank you for your question. Uh, we conducted the survey among the, uh, among the patient households. And uh, it, in that situation, it was unlikely that the person can uh, uh, only one last visit they can tell about expenditure because we it was uh, otherwise it was a very outlier because maybe in the last visit he has some extraordinary situation clinical situation which he has to counter that we asked them uh, retrospectively that in the last one year. Uh, please describe your expenditure in the last visit, in the second last visit, and the visit before that. So, and in when we analysis, we average it down to reduce the outliers so that we get an average per visit cost of expenditure. Uh, my concern was more about the fact that probably you spend most money before you are diagnosed, uh, looking here and there for care. Uh, highly learned opponent, thank you for the question. Uh, in short, we only consider patients which were diagnosed in one last one year, not before that, so they remembered and we included a lot of that cost. Thank you. Thank you. Let's change seat. Um, then I give the floor to Dr. Koopmanschap. Dr. Koopmanschap is Associate Professor of Health Economics and Health Technology Assessment at our university. Dr. Koopmanschap. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dear candidate, uh, also my congratulations with your uh, thesis. It's on an uh, it's an interesting thesis on a relevant topic. I really did not know that uh, leprosy was still such a substantial health problem, but I really picked it up from your thesis. So thanks for that. Um, a question on uh, chapter six, which is uh, your cost analysis of the, the program in uh, two regions. Uh, you conclude in table three and four that uh, you compare the cost per leprosy visit in two regions, and it's, uh, it's smaller in the Umbergaon region, $51 versus $60 in the DNH region. And also later on, the cost per new de de case detected is substantially smaller in that Umbergaon region, if I pronounce it well. Um, but then in the discussion on page 129, you say, uh, this means that the higher cost in DNH was related to more productivity. And I thought, huh? That puzzled me, that statement, because if, if I look at the figures I just cited, uh, it's maybe the other way around. So play, please maybe clarify your statement and maybe especially clarify your definition of productivity, because there are several possible definitions of productivity. Very learned opponent, thank you for your question. Your question is that the gross cost, health system cost, was higher in Dadar Nagar Haveli compared to the routine control program. And, uh, and then later in the discussion, we said that uh, if we consider productivity, this, these costs are not high, so it's look contradictory. I would like to... Uh, answer this question that uh, the health system costing, we did it for 
per uh, primary health center. So for that, we produce as a cost per unit health center. For the productivity, we considered the number of leprosy cases were being uh, 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 delivered the services for uh, in terms of uh, screening and then the, uh, the SDR. And then we found that if we divide that cost into unit cost, even as a gross health system per primary health system cost looks significantly different from the control, but the, the intervention area also served more people. So if we took it as denominator, then the unit cost di does, did not much differ between the two areas. Thank you. Okay, I, I agree with that, but still, if the, if the cost per new case detective, detected was lower in that Umbergon uh, region. So I would say that's also, if you uh, have a lower cost per newly detected case, that's also a kind of productivity, or not? Highly, le a very learned opponent. Thank you for your question. I uh, I uh, uh, think that uh, that product because if you, the program is not active, if the health workers are not going into the field or they are not doing running the program very well, then expenditure decreases, and also you get the program get less new cases. In that sense, if we the one of the sign is of high cost is also that program is active. And that's a sign of productivity. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have time for another question? Oh, then let's go to the cost effectiveness study in chapter seven. Uh, in table two, you do a sensitivity analysis. You show uh, cost effectiveness ratios for several uh, time horizons. And I can see that the, the cost effectiveness ratios are lower. That's better. And when the horizon is longer, uh, could you explain whether that's mainly due to the costs, to the health effects, or, or both? Uh, that pattern of lower cost per dolly when the horizon gets longer. Very learned opponent. Thank you for your question. So your question is that, that the decrease in the incremental cost effective ratio when the time horizon increases is because of the cost or effect or both. Uh, uh, thank you for your question. I think it's because of the both that uh, over time, when we uh, the unit cost decreases because at so after some time your program is still re program reaches, but then it covers more patients. And also when you when the program covers more patients, they also prevent a lot of disabilities. So they are that ISR is decreasing considering cost and effect both. Thank you. Maybe even one small final question. What time horizon would be the best for the policymakers? Because you present time horizons from five years until 25 years, but what would be the, the most practical time horizon for a policymaker to decide whether he, should, he or she should undertake this SDR program? Very learned opponent. Again, thank you for your important question. Uh, yes, the time horizon, the cost, the single dose of rifampicin is cost effective from five years to 25 years. Our ref recommendation is, of course, 25 years. But maybe the program would not find it uh, uh, economically feasible to continue for so long. So uh, we, uh, we recommend 25, but anything between 15 to 25 is a good time. Uh, to implement the SDR, to uh, gain, to secure the gains and to sustain the impact because we also we have seen in programs that first the active case goes very low and then program become dormant and the, the initial cases who come, they again come back. So considering that situation, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next opponent is Professor Van Gorp, mm -hmm. Professor of Clinical Virology, in particular the exotic virus infections. Professor Van Gorp. Thank you very much, Mr. Rector. Mr. Candidate, uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you with, uh, with your thesis, as well as the promotion team, your promoter and co-promoter. Um, I'm working in virology as a clinical doctor also, so leprosy uh, is not a virus. 
Uh, I've read it with, uh, with interest. And especially that you clearly state that although elimination has been reached in large parts of the world, there still is a way to go. Uh, for the hotspots, there still are eh? India, Brazil, uh, Indonesia. Uh, your focus is on effectiveness studies, um, but what I like in your thesis is that there is a red line of social impact, social responsibility, and in that respect, I think your thesis has a much broader reach than only cost effectiveness. Um, well, then some questions or arguments to discuss with you. Um, the first is that um, you talk about the eradication programs. Elimination is not the same as eradication. Um, to reach that goal, it has something. You, you talk about the chain. It starts with awareness, case detection, diagnostics, and then the supply of PEP. So that's a long uh, chain. What is, in your view, the weakest uh, uh, um, the weakest link in this chain. Highly learned opponent, thank you for your question. Your question is that uh, in this whole chain of uh, star, uh, of uh, aiming to reduce the leprosy till you, we achieve it through programmatic route, what is the weakest point which needs more work? Uh, there are several weakest points, not one. Uh, if we start with the diagnostic, as we have discussed with uh, previously, that uh, there is a lack of a very sensitive uh, diagnostic test right now. Because of that, the program is highly dependent on only uh, clinical experience, and uh, subclinical leprosy is undetected, and they, in the, that situation, it keep on spreading. So, first is that we need sensitive diagnostics. Uh, the second also, uh, point is that we need more uh, societal uh, engagement into the program. Uh, program uh, runs uh, very mechanically, national leprosy elimination programs that administrator decides and then they implement the program, but that also uh, through LPEP, we try to also engage the, the, the disability groups and mass media communication so that in a short time we get maximum enrollment. Uh, this is evident that we had very few uh, refusal of consent from patients and the contacts, and this engaged it. The second point, we saw that if health workers are not feel the ownership of the program, if they don't feel they are the important in the program, it's difficult to sustain a program like single dose of rifampicin. In LPEP, we also uh, learned and also improved that situation that now in India, even without uh, the program, LPEP program, the SDR is integrated into the health systems, and uh, we see that the health workers are still motivated, and there is no significant decrease in the number of uh, new enrolled course cases, or they are being not left out after the program uh, has stopped through international funding. Thank you. Okay, so what you clearly state is that much efforts are needed to keep the chain strong. Uh, there, because also in chapter four, you state that um, field-based research on its own, the programs, are necessary to keep health systems in focus. That's, that's what you state. Um, and that's in line with the first question. If you talk about awareness, is it uh, what is the most important? Are that the patients, the uh, or the public, the the possible cases, or are that the policy makers? Uh, where do we need uh, awareness most? Of course, at at all levels, but where are we missing it in the programs? Highly learned opponent, thank you for again your important question. Uh, the in the democracy, I think the people are the most important fulcrum of everything. And India is a democratic country, and because of that, I think the people uh, should be more given, enabled, and should be given more choices and given more uh, awareness for leprosy, to see leprosy. Uh, also see the, that stigma and discrimination should stop, and they feel a sense of security, but also urgency, because we have seen that people develop clinical signs and symptoms, which is like anesthetic skin patch, and they 
they re don't realize the consequences because they don't know the consequences that leprosy can really bring a permanent disability lifelong. Because of stigma and discrimination, also people, if they know consequences, they don't come out because they feel that their position in the society will be degraded forever if they've been, been known as a leprosy patient or a household from a leprosy patient. Thank you. Okay, that's the issue about stigma, which you, which you mentioned. So yeah. people feel stigmatized. Yes. Uh, th uh, yeah, thank you, uh, highly learned opponent. And if if the, the program is only successful when it gets the support from the people. Mm -hmm. So your previous question was where is the starting point, which is the most important point. I think people are the most important point which should be given support, given information, and uh, enabled to make choices. Okay. Thank you. Another question is, uh, if there's still time, um, this is a short question. Okay, this is a str strong system, at least what, what you aim to do in this uh, program. Is there a link with elimination programs for other diseases in India? Uh, because there are other diseases that should be eliminated. Is there similarity in the programs? Highly learned opponent, thank you for your question. Your question is that, is there is a good uh, link between other diseases uh, in collaborative manner to operate the program. Unfortunately, there is not a very good re uh, link because of the uh, bureaucratic system. Uh, for an example, from the pro from our study, I want to refer it that uh, that uh, we also had a uh, exclusion criteria of uh, people who have clinical sinus symptoms of tuberculosis. If they are being found, then they, it was they were excluded to get the single dose of rifampicin. We signif we uh, very uh, in, uh, with a lot of efforts. We tried to. Uh, we detected people who had clinical signs and symptoms of, of tuberculosis and referred them to the TB department, but we never received uh, confirmation whether they had a TB okay. or not. So leprosy program is not linked with TB. But how could, it, how could this be done better? What is your idea? And then a very short question because I see the rector looking. <laughs> Thank you for your question, highly learned opponent. This can be better, again, if we have to work at different uh, layers. Uh, one is that the uh, administrative layer. Second is that the uh, uh, doctors, they have to, uh, they have a link. In a quick short answer, if there is a nodal program officer which also involve in both TB and leprosy, and then it would be. Okay, thank you very better. much. Thank uh, you. I'd like to hear your idea about this. I give the word back to the director. Thank you. I give the floor now to your co-promoter, Dr. Block, researcher at the Department of Public Health. Dr. Block. Thank you. Dear candidate, first of all, congratulations for this important piece of work. Uh, in the coming few minutes, I want to talk about the concept of DALIs. In your thesis, you mentioned that the use in leprosy is problematic. And you mentioned that the under underestimation of the disability weights as one of the most important reasons for, for not uh, using DALIs within leprosy. Uh, my first question to you is, could you explain why? And do you think there are any, any, any other reasons for not using DALIs uh, within leprosy? Very learned opponent, thank you for your question. Your question is that, that uh, the concept of DALI, is it suitable for leprosy or not? And uh, how to improve it? What is the suitable method otherwise? Uh, DALI is a very well accepted uh, matrix of measuring the disease burden that is undisputed. Uh, it gives a flexibility to compare different diseases and program managers get prioritized based on that. Uh, but there are some complications is that the methodologies for calculating the disability wage, which is the fulcrum of converting into the disability burden at global level, is not same for all diseases. So, uh, and it same not for all diseases. I would just only highlight one big reason for that, which is more related is that the data supporting uh, is not same because data comes from the program. So if a TB program is better recording and reporting data, it produces, it can produce more better evidence based on that. Uh, the disability weights can be decided. For example, I want to give it for leprosy. We don't have, know how many grade one disability are there and how many grade two. We know grade two disability, but we don't know how many grade one disability uh, happens in the world for, due to leprosy. Because of that, there is a very big assumption in calculating the disability adjusted life years. 
and uh, that assumption is very uh, crude at the situation and the description of disease is also very uh, limited and actually leprosy has more uh, consequences, clinical and physical consequences than the currently described uh, situations in the, uh, in the dailies to calculate the disability weight. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I think you correctly mentioned uh, the data issue within leprosy for calculating the dollies. Um, also, you have mentioned the disability weights. Uh, nevertheless, in Chapter 7, you applied dollies for your cost-effectiveness analysis. So why did you choose to use dollies, knowing that it may be problematic? Hi, Lil, a very learned opponent. Thank you for your question. We accepted dollies because uh, it is very well accepted in all the groups. Thank you. Mr. Candidate, the time allowed for the defense of your thesis is over, and the committee will now withdraw to deliberate. And would you please wait here until we return? And adjourn the meeting now. I reopen the meeting. Mr. Candidate, the doctorate board of the Erasmus University Rotterdam, represented by me, has considered your thesis. And having heard your defense and the advice of this committee, I grant you the title of doctor. And I authorize Professor Richardus to bestow this degree upon you in the customary manner. It is with great pleasure that I undertake the task Director Magnificus has allotted me. By the authority invested by law and according to the decision of the doctorate board of this university, I hereby confer upon you, Anuj Tiwari, the doctorate degree. As a testimony and proof hereof, I present you the diploma signed by Director Magnificus, promoter, co-promoter, and other members of this committee and endorsed with the seal of the university. Okay. Having performed this task, may I take the opportunity to be the first to address you as a doctor and to congratulate you on your achievement. Now, finally, you have achieved this important milestone on your career. You are a doctor and you have received your PhD degree. You are now a very learned person, a health scientist with an impressive and unique track record. Congratulations. Over the pa past five, six years, you have been involved in a large multi-country project to investigate the feasibility of implementing preventive chemotherapy with single-dose rifampicin for contacts of leprosy patients within the routine health programs of endemic countries. And this project was called the LPEP program. The initiative for this project was taken by NLR in Amsterdam and subsequently funded and coordinated by Novartis Foundation in Basel. Our public health department at Erasmus MC 
was invited to participate with emphasis on data collection, data management, and analysis. We had two data managers available at the time in the department, Ru Faber and Frank Santergoed, and they helped develop and introduce a data collection and management infrastructure for the program. But we also needed a junior researcher who could, could support the project full time. And the required skills list was enormous. The profile included a person with a medical or health science background, experience with working in developing countries, familiar with data management and statistical analysis, based in the Netherlands and willing to travel extensively. And on top of that, the candidate needed to be flexible, adaptable, energetic, and to be able to re relate to all sorts of people in different countries and of different cultural backgrounds. In short, a sheep with five legs, a schaap met vijf poten, as we say in, in the Netherlands. Surprisingly, in the many applications that we received, there was clearly one person who ticked all the boxes, and even more. And in addition, I thought it was really a privilege to employ a person from India, the largest endemic country in the world. So we were very, very happy to have found you. Because the financial commitment of our sponsor was only for one year at a time, you worked on yearly contracts, introducing quite some uncertainty for you uh, as you worked on the project. You traveled extensively to many exotic places, often with our uh, colleague, uh, Lisbeth Miras from NLR, who's here. It was a very exhausting time, but you managed well and never really complained. At least you never complained to me. Apart from supporting the LPEP program, you also worked on the papers of your PhD thesis. Having a health economic background, the concept of a leprosy elimination investment case appealed to you, and you started off with a thorough systematic review on this topic, and this paper is now considered a foundation stone for defi defining a leprosy elim elimination activities. You continue to focus uh, on health system and economic matters related to the introduction of single-dose rifampicin in leprosy control programs and the impact of this intervention on the new case detection rates. It has delivered a series of solid and groundbreaking articles rare in the field of leprosy. The years working on your PhD um, have sometimes been very satisfying, but it also has been sad and frustrating for you personally at times. And I admire you on how you manage to stay positive and work your way through all the difficulties. These past years have been a learning experience academically and personally, and I believe that you have grown tremendously in both of these aspects. So today, I hope you can celebrate your achievements without any hesitancy. You can be proud of yourself, and of course, we are very proud of you. Finally, I would also like to thank the committee members for your time and expertise committed to this graduation. It is highly appreciated. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being online. And I also want to congratulate all family members, friends and colleagues of Anuj who are here in person or have followed your defense through the live stream. Once more, congratulations with your doctorate degree. Very well earned. And with these words, I would like to return the word to the rector. Thank you. Dr. Tiwari, I have the pleasure also on behalf of the doctorate board of the university to congratulate you on having obtained your doctorate degree. I have a small present from the doctorate board. It's a silver pin. It's the top of the ceremonial staff of the Beadle as a memory to this very special day. And I now formally declare this meeting closed.
looks a big audience. 